While we're going through all the jurisdictional boxes here, let me take you to the uh, whether the president's included in the 14th Amendment. And I'll ask you just a, sp a specific question. Um, I'm a little surprised to not have heard on the intervener side and the amici on, on your side a real full-throated response to the absurdity doctrine argument. I mean, there's an argument here, and I'd like you to respond to it. Um, how is it not, and I'm not making fun of any of this, how is it not absurd to say anybody who engaged in insurrection can't serve an office who engage, except the president or a former president or a vice president or a former president? How is that not absurd? So the absurdity doctrine requires, and looking at sort of the Scalia-Garner definition, which is as probably the best out there, um, it has to sort of be beyond, a, beyond reason. It couldn't even be reasonable for the framers to take that approach. And here's the approach the framers took, and we have to look at the historical context as well. They said the presidency, remember it's office under the United States, officer of the United States, so we're talking office under the United States, is protected through presidential electors, through presidential electors. So that's one protection. The second protection was... But, I'm sorry, to interrupt before you go into the second, but do you really think the framers took a whole lot of comfort in the fact that the electors are going to protect us from an insurrectionist former president like a Jefferson Davis? Yes, and that's why they included them. So that's why they include. And but but let me finish, if I may, for my other by, two. By points. all means, sure. they also looked at the freedmen, former slaves who could now vote, and then they also looked at the electoral strength that the northern northern states had to provide comfort. It's perfectly reasonable in this context. And by the way, they were right. They were right for a hundred years. It wasn't a hundred years until a southerner got elected. Now I'm not saying Jimmy Carter was an insurrectionist by any means, but before you even had a Southerner elected. So not only was it not absurd, but their framework and approach was successful. It was very successful. And, 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 and when you look at the actual language, look, if you look at the structure of the text, it is harmonious, it was very carefully drafted, and every indicator points towards excluding the presidency and the president. Officer of the United States is used in four different contexts of the United States Constitution, every one of them which excludes, properly viewed, the president. The appointment clause, of course, there's been a lot of discussion on. And, and so, fair enough, so, so what is the, it does also refer to repeatedly the office of the president and the like. What office is, under the United States, officer of the United but States. But when it talks about the president, yes, it sir. describes that as an office. Correct. What, so the president is an officer. What is the president, president an officer of? So the, um, if I can find my notes quick enough, um, the analysis that has been found is that the president is an officer of, to the extent we have that concept, of the Constitution. So an office under the United States is one created by the United States government. An officer of the United States is one that serves the United States government. And there is um, precedent that says, Look, senators, representatives, and the presidency, president, they are the government. That's sort of the reasonable, the analysis, the distinction. And, 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 and look, opposing counsel pointed to the um, emoluments clause as absurd. How could you possibly believe a president would not be part of the emoluments clause? Well, I would suggest you walk into Mount Vernon, and you will see above the fireplace a full-length portrait of King Louis the, Louis the 16th that was given to George Washington by the French government. And no one batted an eye. It was never viewed as a violation.